Greetings friends around the world. This is Bible News Prophecy Program. My name is Alexander Sashavelic and welcome. Well, we are talking about Bible myths and uh, in the last program we quoted the writings of Tertullian. Now the scripture that Tertullian seems to be referring to in his writings is 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 1 which says, Whosoever are servants under the yoke, let them count their masters worthy of all honor, lest the name of the Lord and his doctrine be blasphemed. But as even he alluded to, that should not have been an excuse to celebrate pagan days. Notice that it would be false teachers that would get the way of truth blasphemed, Second Peter chapter 1, uh, and then please uh, just go to chapter 2 rather, Second Peter chapter 2 verse 1. But there were also false prophets among the people of Israel, ancient Israel in Old Testament, even as there will be among you lying teachers who shall bring in sects of perdition and deny the Lord who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their right, right, uh, riotousness, through whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Verse 3, And though covetous, through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingers not, and their perdition slumbers not. So this is Second Peter, his second epistle, chapter 2, verse 1, 2, and 3. So, following covetousness, false teachings, is really what causes the way of truth to be blasphemed. Now, going back to Tertullian, Tertullian continues, and he wrote more, on idolatry now, chapter 15, he says, But let your works shine, says he, he meaning Jesus Christ in his writings, but now all our shops and gates shine. You will nowadays find more doors to heathens without lamps and laurel wreaths than of Christians. What does the case seem to be with regard to the, that species of ceremony also? If it is a, an idol owner, without a doubt, an idol owner is idolatry. If it is for a man's sake, let us again consider that a, all idolatry is for man's sake. Let us again consider that all idolatry is a worship done to men, since it is generally agreed, even among their nations, were men. And so it makes no difference whether that superstitious homage be rendered to me of a former age or of this. Idolatry is condemned, not on account of persons, of the persons which are set up for worship, but on account of those its observances which pertain to demons. So this is quote from Tertullian's uh, writing on idolatry, chapter 15, and excerpted from anti nicene Fathers, volume 3, edited by Alexander Roberts and James Donaldson, American edition in 1885, and online copyright is uh, 2004 by K. Knight. What Tertullian seems to be saying is that observing midwinter celebrations make Christmas appear to be followers of pagan gods even more so than the pagans themselves and since the pagans would not intentionally celebrate days considered by many to be Christian Christians should not celebrate days that are honored by the heathen specifically he felt that those who profess Christ should not celebrate Saturnalia New Year's or other pagan days as even the observance is a form of idolatry now notice that he was also pointing out that his Christians, but these Christians I, we put under quotation mark, that his Christians even used laurel wreaths and lights more than the heathen. Even the Catholic Encyclopedia says of them that they have pre-Christian origin, that Tertullian considered them pagan. Now notice that they were in widespread use, however, by the time of the late 4th century, and here is Bishop of Constantinople, John Chrysostom, here's a quote from his writing, a wreath of flowers or evergreens formerly used in connection with baptismal, nuptial and funeral rites as well as in solemn processions. The bridal crown or wreath is said to be of pre-Christian Greek origin, adopted later by the Romans. Tertullian refers to it as a sign of paganism, but the, this prejudice was afterwards set aside and it was common news among Christians by the time of St. John Chrysostom. Now this is... Uh, from the Catholic Encyclopedia, author is Alston, George Cyprian, Garland, the Catholic Encyclopedia, Volume 6, published in New York, Robert Appleton Company, 1909. Please, dear friends 
and listeners also notice the following. Roman Christmases were similar to ours. The Romans celebrated, indeed, the winter festivals Sigillaria on 23rd of December, part of their Saturnalia festivities. Just like on Christmas Day, Sigillaria saw presents exchanged. Saturnalia began in the very early history of Rome. It was a festival devoted to the sun, to the god Saturn. The popularity of Saturnalia continued into the 3rd and 4th centuries until it was supplanted by the Christian festival of Christmas. Just like our festive season, it seems that the whole of Rome geared up early for Sigillaria, Seneca noted. And he adds, it is now the month of December when the greatest part of the city is in a bustle. <coughs> Loose reins are given to public dissipation. Everywhere you may hear the sound of great preparations. And uh, this was published in uh, an article entitled Roman Christmases were similar to ours on December 23, 2014 on uh, uh, phys.org news 2013-12-roman-christmases-similar.html and uh, this information was indeed a- accessed to in 2013. Now, since the modern Christmas celebration is at the same time as the old Gentile Saturnalia holiday, and with many of the same elements like wreaths and gift-giving, it is clear that Tertullian is condemning these practices by stating that those that keep it are of the pagan uh, god Saturn, meaning the followers of the pagan god Saturn, the most evil of all pagan deities. Tertullian also wrote against winter-giving, gifts, like those you have in the Saturnalia, and this is in his writing, De Fuga in Persecuzione, chapter 13, excerpted from anti nicene Fathers, volume 4, edited by Alexander Roberts and James Donaldson, American edition, 1885, online edition, copyright 2004 by K. Knight. So basically, those who teach Jesus is the reason for the season are in error. Those who profess Christ are observed and observe these pagan holidays, did not attempt to pretend that they were celebrating Christmas, under quotation mark, then that term was not even developed until centuries later. The initial reason for the season appears to be that many of those who somewhat professed Christ wanted to have a party, and they did not care if the party was related to pagan gods. It's interesting to know that Tertullian objected to keeping a celebration lasting until the Roman New Year's, putting up wreaths and giving gifts. Since most of these quotes came, actually come from his writing titled on, and titles, writing titles on idolatry, apparently Tertullian considered those practices as idolatrous, and of course, thus not fitting for the Christians. <coughs> so it seems, dear friends, that no true Christians would do this, only those who were somewhat nominal, but who had been accepted to some degree by part of the Greco-Roman Confederation. Tertullian's complaints apparently did not stop this from happening, though his objections certainly have biblical support. Now, notice something that John Chrysostom wrote in the 4th century condemning paganism. And what, pray you, is that Minerva of theirs and Apollo and Juno? There are different kinds of demons among them. This is from John Chrysostom John's The Homilies of St. John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople on the Acts of the Apostles, Volume 1, Homily 4, and it was published by John Henry Parker, 1851, original from Harvard University, digitized April 12, 2008, page 66. Notice that, like Tertullian, John Chrysostom associated paganism with, very clearly associated with, demons. And yet... Venerable Caesare Baronius, a Roman Catholic of the 16th century, wrote the following, If the candles which were formerly distributed at the Saturnalia are now identified with the feast of the purification of Our Lady, what I ask is there so surprising if holy bishops have allowed certain customs firmly rooted among pagan peoples and so tenaciously adhered to by them that even after their conversion to Christianity, they could not be induced to surrender them to be transferred to the worship of the true God. This is Baronius in his Annales, 
uh, and it will be at Analysis 58 and page 77. It's, it's cited in Thurston's uh, Herbert's book, Lights, and also in the Catholic Encyclopedia, Volume 9, uh, and that was published on October the 1st, 1910. Thus Baronius seems to be saying that Saturnalia lights are a pagan practice, yet using them is acceptable. But even the Rheims version of the New Testament, it's a Catholic approved translation from R-H-E-I-M-S, states the following. And here is the quote from that uh, here is a quote from that Catholic approved translation of the Bible. And what agreement with Christ and Belial? Or what part has the faithful with the infidel, and what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God says, Then I'll dwell and walk in them, and will be their God, and they shall be my people. For the which cause go out of the midst of them, and separate yourselves, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean, and I'll receive you. This was translation, Rhames, second of Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15 through 17. So, friends, unclean practices associated with idols are prohibited by God very clearly in the Bible, just like the first commandment prohibits any and all idolatry. So does not that include celebrating uh, as the idolaters uh, celebrate? The Roman Saturnalia and the Persian Mithraism themselves were adaptations of an even earlier pagan religion, that of the ancient Babylonian mystery cult. The ancient Babylonians celebrated the reborn Nimrod as the newborn Tammuz by worshipping an evergreen tree. The Babylonians also celebrated this rebirth during the season of the winter solstice. Jeremiah condemns ancient Israel for copying this type of paganism and condemned that the pagan use of, the, of trees in Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2, 3, and 4, and the evergreen tree in Jeremiah 3, 13. To take this a step further, Please notice that using trees as part of worship was condemned by God thousands of years ago in Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 2 and 3. Jerusalem Bible, New Jerusalem Bible says, You must completely destroy all the places where the nations you dispossess have served their gods, on high mountains, on hills, under any spreading tree. You must tear down their altars, smash their sacred stones, burn their sacred poles, hack to bits the statutes of their gods, and obliterate their name from that place. Here is the uh, Deuteronomy 12, verse 2, 3, and 4. Dewey, Old Testament, a Catholic translation, it says, Destroy all the places in which the nations that you shall possess worship their gods upon high mountains and hills and under every shady tree. Overthrow their altars and break down their statues, burn their groves with fire and break their idols in pieces. Destroy their name out of those places. You shall not do so to the Lord your God. Beware, this is now Deuteronomy 11 and uh, verse 16. Beware, lest perhaps your heart be deceived and you depart from your our Lord and serve strange gods and adore them. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 9 and 12. What thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God shall give thee, beware lest thou have a mind to imitate the abominations of those nations. Verse 12. For the Lord abhors all these things, and for these abominations he will destroy them at thy coming. Roman Catholic Church, brethren, Roman Catholic translators of the Bible show that spreading shady trees like evergreens were not to be part of the worship of the true God, and that people should not be deceived and serve such strange practices or other pagan practices. The truth is that Christmas reminds us that people are often unwilling to worship God as He intended, but instead often prefer pagan substitutes that they rationalize as somehow acceptable if they pretend the holiday is about Jesus. Those who truly believe Jesus' words, Matthew 4.4, 4, Human beings live not on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. They will not celebrate a compromised pagan holiday such as Christmas because it contains practices and symbols warned against in the Bible and was never enjoined upon the true believers to practice. Apparently the practice of Christmas caroling also has its origins in Saturnalia indeed and there are many other practices that people associate with Christmas 
that came from pagan holidays. Yet, you know, the 12 days of Christmas originally came from the 12 days of Yuletide, which began at sunset on December 20th, known as Mother Night, and ending on the night of December 31, 31st, the night of the Oak King and the Roman Day of Hecate. The dates were later moved to those who keep Christmas in deed. Yuletide is perhaps the greatest of all heathen holidays we read in one of the sources that we have. And Twelve Nights of Yuletide, Nordic Weekend, December 5th, 2014. And let's just leave this for the next program so that you would once again be acquainted with the uh, origin of Christmas, dear friends. Until next time, goodbye, friends.